For those of you who haven't spent much time with Flutter, we're an open source, portable UI toolkit designed to enable beautiful, fast experiences on any platform. Right now, over 5 million Flutter developers have experienced Flutter since Flutter 1.0. And over 700,000 apps have been launched to date using Flutter, from small apps, from entrepreneurs, to those with over a billion downloads. And as GitHub noted in their recent Octaverse, uh, Flutter is one of the top three open source projects by contributors. I'm going to talk about a few things that are uh, examples of what's new in Flutter. So we've enhanced Material 3 support, as you've heard already. And uh, this includes migration of widgets such as radio buttons, sliders, and badges to Material 3. We have adaptive layouts, which uh, enables your app's UI to automatically scale to look great on, any, on various screen sizes. We've got menu bars and cascading context menus, uh, which are fully customizable to your app's needs. We've made Impeller, which is the uh, uh, graphics rendering engine that we've been building, uh, available now as a preview for you to use uh, in iOS versions of your app. And to help you with the iOS app release process, uh, the tool now validates some of the settings that you need uh, to be configured before you actually submit to the App Store. PUBG Mobile 目前全球有十亿玩家，日活跃五千万，由光子工作室及 Craftan 联合研发。I am happy to announce Dart 3 Alpha, the first preview of our next major release, and I have three things I would like to show you today. We have new language features. We have the completion of our multi-year journey towards sound all safety. Oh, and we've expanded on our already comprehensive platform support. Your Dart code now always runs with the sound null safety, and you will no longer be able to run without it. For packages on pop.dev, 98% of the top 1,000 packages have already migrated. Thank you. <laughs> when this code compiled to machine code with Dart 1, our compiler produced 26 machine code instructions to have all the needed runtime checking in place. With sound law safety in Dart 2, we could reduce this down to 10 instructions. And in Dart 3, with sound law safety everywhere, we're now down to three instructions. New in Dart 3 is experimental support for the emerging WebAssembly standard. And a great example of this is Rive. Rive is rapidly becoming one of the most popular ways to build interactive graphics, whether you're targeting Flutter or another platform. And for Rive, the editor itself is written in Flutter on the web. And in fact, it was one of the first things to be built with the web on Flutter. And apps like this, with their complex uh, visual needs and their complex UI needs, are really hard to do without a framework like Flutter. But this version of the Flutter uh, uh, web uh, app is not using JavaScript. In fact, if I go into the dev tools and I make this a little bit bigger, you can see that what we've got here is instead of the usual sort of main.dart.js, which is normally the big thing that contains everything, we've got main.dart.wasm. And this is the compiled version of this code to uh, WebAssembly. I want to show a second thing, uh, which uh, is uh, called element embedding. Something that we've been working on here enables you to take Dart and Flutter and compile it and put it in a div as a web component so it can integrate deeply with the rest of the platform. And this is the div here. And you can see that through a bit of JavaScript code, we filled that with the Flutter counter application. So now uh, you can see that I can do the usual things. This is the traditional Flutter counter app. But look, on the left-hand side, what you're seeing here, this is JavaScript. This is a JavaScript text box. And uh, you see that as I continue to increment the button on the Flutter side, that state can be pushed across to the JavaScript side. <laughs> Better still, I can go the other way as well. So I can hit the increment button on the JavaScript side and affect the state in Flutter. And because what you're looking at here is just a regular HTML div, you can do other things with it. You can, for example, apply CSS. So I could add a shadow effect. That's kind of nice. 
or I could resize it in real time, or I could even switch it into a device mode and skew it. Check that out. <laughs> But it doesn't just go there, because I can also flip it across. I can go into something like a text field. And these are things that you know, are often quite difficult to imp imp implement. But even in this text field mode, if I switch again back into that device mode, you can see that the text field still works. I can do selection with SKUs. That's all pretty good. Let's, let's uh, switch it up again a little bit more. Let's uh, make it uh, back into landscape mode. And let's add a spin. Oh, check that out. OK, but this is live, right? So I can still go backwards and forwards here. And I can uh, select text, and I can get, it gets quite challenging when I'm doing it in reverse. I can type into it, and it's still working. This is just like a text field in CSS with CSS effects. How about, <laughs> How about for a bit more fun, I'll just add a CSS mirror effect. So now what you're seeing here is the CSS uh, reflecting of the Dart code here. So again, I can continue to make these changes. And you can see it reflected at the, back, at the bottom. What do you think? And uh, what you see here is just a very simple example of pixel shaders at work. There's our famous Dash. And uh, with this uh, slider, I can uh, change how pixelated she is. And this is exactly the same code that Eric wrote and demonstrated for mobile, but we've just taken it and transformed it, uh, or just taken it and compiled it for the web. And now I can do all these kind of really crazy cool effects, like adding this kind of point pointillism sort of uh, view. And you can see that this is just what goes on as it's loading different images and applying these pixel shaders. But over the past year, we've continued to add lots of exciting new features. We've been improving text input. We've been adding support for foldable devices and variable refresh rate. We've been simplifying release processes, enhancing our developer tooling, and improving performance. All right, let's consider a news app. I think we can all agree that more and more people are reading news on their phone. But for developers, that means building navigation and search, authentication, ad integrations, profiles and subscriptions, notifications, it's a lot of work. So to help with this, we're excited to announce that the first version of Flutter's news toolkit is now available for everyone. First up, I have my Samsung Tab 8, which is a pretty big tablet. And I can swipe through the app and see these beautiful graphics, all this great imagery. And it looks really nice on this larger screen, right? But now with these tablets, we have lots of different multi-display modes. So I can drop a new app into view and see it resize. And it still looks really natural on this new format. Now let me add another one, and we'll see it resize again, looking great. So let me get rid of this one down here and make it even narrower. And still, we see that it looks beautiful, even on this really narrow screen that it's left with. OK, so like I said, this looks great, but let's head over to a different screen. I'm going to go over to this view where I can see a timeline of different events for that wonder. Here they're vertically stacked, and I can scroll through. But now when I open it, I'll scroll down to that same page, and we can see that we have a whole new format. Right, so this is really just two screens side by side, and we're taking advantage of that by having the imagery on the left-hand side and the scrollable events on the right-hand side. So say I want to start tracking my daily steps in a new pedometer app. On Android, I might use the new Health Connect client. And on iOS, maybe I want to use the CM pedometer class. That's part of the core motion framework. So in the past, we'd probably use method channels to call these APIs. But that can sometimes require a lot of code. So now looking forward, our vision is that you can call all these APIs directly from Dart. <laughs> So I have this fun little Kaleidoscope app, and it has some animations that were created by clipping a whole bunch of different SVGs. So on the left-hand side, I have my build that's using Skia, which is our current default renderer. And as we're scrolling down the page, we can see that it struggles a little bit. It's only rendering at about 7 to 10 frames per second. But on the right-hand side is our build using Impeller, which looks really smooth. It's rendering at like 60 frames per second. 
Can we get our cool 3D logo? Ah, there we go. <laughs> All right, so who wants to see me make a 3D dash painted entirely in Flutter? All right, let's give it a try. So right now I have a pretty simple widget, or a pretty simple app, rather. It just has an image widget to display a 2D version of dash that's created from this PNG file. So nothing fancy. She is looking cute, but I really want to make her 3D. So let me go ahead and switch out this widget over here. And instead, we're going to use a scene. And scene accepts a node, which can take an asset. And in this case, my asset is going to be a model file. It's actually something called a GLB file. So I'll save that. Oops. And reload. And she's 3D. <laughs> So she's just in this cool little light box, and we can turn her around and see how she's looking. So I think Dash looks pretty nice, but 3D gets really cool when we can add in animations. So I'm going to go ahead and add in an animation. These are just saved in my file already, so I just call them by their name, which in this case is walk. I'll save, and again, hot reload. And we can see her walking around. Cool. But the thing is that we were just talking about performance, so I think we need to turn it up a notch, right? Instead of just showing a single dash, I think we want to show a whole bunch of dash. Is. <laughs> so I have my helper function called many nodes, and I'm going to wrap it around my node object. Press save. Again, we'll hot reload. And now we have a whole bunch of dashes. It's actually a cube of dashes, 7 by 7 cube to be exact. So that's 343 dashes walking around. So that means more than 10,000 individual joints that are being evaluated at every frame with Hot Reload. Thank you, Impeller. 